All right, everybody, let's take a quick look at um, yesterday's chart. I wasn't able to get the market uh, outlook done last night. Uh, it was a busy night for us here at the Settle household and uh, end of our little basketball season here. Had the, um, kind of a big game last night. So um, plus we had to get ready for some things for school here today. So that ended up taking some time. And, and as a result, um, today's video uh, I'm going to do, or for yesterday's video, I'm going to do a quick one here just today because you'll have Brandon's regular Market Outlook video here later uh, this afternoon, and then I'll be back on on Friday. So uh, let's take a look uh, quickly. You can see yesterday we had a little bit of a small loss, um, a small loss on the S&P 500, not very much of one at all. Uh, the near-term line dropped down, but it's still... Um, in the upper half of the chart, uh, this is seven days now. These are seven days that we've been above here. So that's actually a pretty decent near-term run, a regular near-term run. Uh, so we still haven't really started to shorten up the runs yet on the near-term line. That's kind of a precursor to the end of an intermediate rally. So we haven't had that yet. Obviously, we haven't had an oversold near-term line this whole time. We haven't had the momentum line get too extreme except for this one time right there. Um, so other than that, you know, everything has been just fine. Dark green shading and a green line, and you can see that's across the board. The Dow Jones Industrial Average is that way, uh, the NASDAQ Composites that way, and the Russell 2000s that way. So uh, all have falling near-term lines, uh, but um, basically because we're slowing down on this little rally, you can kind of see the the curve that's forming here. Uh, that's, that's kind of a typical type move. All right, so... When we take a look at the long-term chart, the weekly chart, we talked about on Monday, this really good candle. It's looking very similar to this type of move that we had here. Again, I'm not saying we're going to get that kind of decline, but but this it's kind of setting up for divergence-type highs here, considering how, I mean, we're even higher now in the PPO than we were then, and this is an apples apples. We're not higher now because we have a higher you know value on the S&P. We're just higher. Uh, so... Uh, that's how, and, and again, bullish candles all across the board, especially on the Russell 2000. Higher, we closed above last week's high on the Russell. Higher high, higher close, no lower shadow, closing above. I mean, that's a very, very insanely bullish candle. The Dow closed above all these highs. Uh, that's a good breakout. And then the S&P also closing above these last three weeks highs. Uh, another good bullish kind of breakout candle. Again, very similar to what we saw right there. Uh, where we had a breakout candle there, and we had a couple of weeks and before things kind of turned uh, south. Let's take a look at the three green arrow chart, and you can see uh, we still have the three green arrows. So you see the MACD histogram is rolling over. You can see that in the two-line version here as well. You see that histogram is rolling over, but we're still easily above the eight. And remember, you're not, you're not threatening uh, any kind of near-term pullback, really, until you at least break the eight, much less the 17. Um, and remember, you're not you're not threatening an intermediate pullback until you break the um, until you break the. Sorry, there. It's down to there we go. Until you break the 23% retracement. So that's you know that's way over here, and we're not you know we're by the time we break that, obviously you'd be breaking the eight and the 17 and the the 30. So you've got to break that 17 or the, at least the eight and test the 17 for any kind of near-term decline. So we're not still not there yet. We're still easily above the eight-day moving average. Um, you take a look at some of these other uh, oscillators, and you can see we're above, excuse me, the SPY's DMI is below 30, back below 30, um, but we're still above 25, so very low ADX. We're just really grinding now. Uh, I have it in our class portfolios, you know, we have a hedge trade on, because our upside is very limited. As you can see with the ADX, our upside is very limited. Um, or our downside, if we were to get a downside, you know, because you notice we haven't had a this type of correction yet here. So if and when we do get that, you know, the downside is much, uh, there's bigger risk than there is the limited upside. Uh, you take a look at the RSI and the CCI, and you can see, you know, we're still forming these lower highs here, even though we're up to higher highs. And finally, the Ichimoku cloud, we've got a weak trend, so we are above, we are outside of this kind of one-to-one -one range, but we actually do have a trend, it's a weak bullish trend, um, and again, it's got to cross above these kind of dotted lines to get to a moderately strong level, and we're way up above the blue and the green lines, um, 
and well up above the cloud too and prices of the red lines above price let's take a look at the intraday chart here and you can see um, you know that we looked yesterday at IWM in class look at that big time volume gap that we have to the downside because we moved up so far so fast uh, with gaps with a lot with a few overnight gaps and it left a big hole here that you don't see uh, on the queues right you, see, you don't see that big volume there's a little bit of one down here and the SBY same thing there was a little bit of a volume gap down to 385 that's only five dollars away but for IWM there's a much larger volume gap all the way down to 214 so so very poor margin of safety on IWM right now on a short-term basis so again the risk to the downside is much larger doesn't mean that we will go to the downside it just means that the risk of the downside is much larger than the S&P's where we only have about five point drop uh, down to this 385 level um, you look at uh, yesterday's volume and trading range if I were to zoom in here uh, you can't really see it as well but you can see the range was under five points the volume at 65 million so it did get a little bit of a bump up in volume um, so um, but you can see like we're still kind of flirting with one percent one percent is three point nine points so we are above the average uh, the ATR is at four point four six so we're not you know we're not getting below that one percent mark which really entrenches us on this bullish move and then you can see about the average we had about average volume yesterday uh, the volatility index is still flirting with extremely low levels uh, even though we're not breaking 20 so that's a concern too in terms of like you know we're not going to to when we break 20 and we break one percent on the atr you know again that's that means we're grinding with small moves uh to the upside um that's when you are really established on a on a significant um, bullish trend right if I go back five years you can see you get below 20 in this case we got below 15 but you get below 20 and you're established on a bullish trend you notice we've taken this leg up all throughout two, uh, 2020 in fact I saw something in fact I think I tweeted this out I did I tweeted this out here uh, from Liz Liz on Sanders uh, Liz Ann Sanders however she said that my wife's name is Andrea um, but a lot of people, especially from the South, call her Andrea. So, so I can understand if uh, maybe she goes by Liz on, Liz on, or Liz Ann. But, uh, but you notice here that the like we are, you know, this is how many days? What 244 days the VIX has been above 20? Um, that's a lot. Like you can see, like these are the credit crisis and QE2, and this is the the financial crisis, the big bear market. Uh, coming off a big bear market there at the end of 2008 when things really took off. Here's the other bear market that we had, and we had a you know that little period of time in 1998, which is kind of like where we're at right now. But you can see that coming off that level, the VIX was really really high for a long time. Um, it only gets this high usually when you are up above you know in a bear market, and for the most part, when you're in really good bullish grinding markets, the VIX is really low. So that kind of tells me a little bit about you know, when the VIX stays higher, you'll get big moves to the upside. You'll get really good big moves to the upside uh, when the VIX is higher. Um, but you also get pretty big moves to the downside because your jumps in volatility before would peak at 20 when you're on these bullish moves, maybe up to 30. Now we're getting just short, just short little blips. Like we haven't had an, inter we've only had the one intermediate pullback really right here that started here that's been our only intermediate pullback that we've had that was a that was a near-term uh, pullback noise this was noise and they almost got up to 40 uh, on the vix coming from 20 so that means again big you know relatively bigger moves to the upside but big noisy moves to the downside even when they're not um pullbacks there so so we're not to an established grinding uptrend yet, and that's still actually forthcoming. Uh, you can kind of see from the daily moves uh, that uh, you look at all these positive gaps, uh, positive gaps that we're getting, these positive rallies. Uh, there's still a pretty decently sized gap between implied volatility and historical. So, you know, again, you, get, you typically get an intermediate pullback when, when historical jumps above um, jumps above here and remember I said that that's about as close to an intermediate pullback in June 
without actually being one. But at least it's you know its historical volatility did jump up. Uh, since then, we haven't had that. We did, not even in September or October we didn't have historical volatility make a jump up, um, which is again very typical of those types of pullbacks. I mean, look at 2019 right there. That's that's an intermediate pullback. These are intermediate pullbacks. At least a couple of them. This was a market sentiment decline uh, in fourth quarter 2018. But you can see how the historical volatility will jump up on these pullbacks and we just haven't had that yet uh, here uh, at all really since um, except for a brief period there in June. Very very short uh, declines. All right now let's take a quick look at um, what's what is driving this action here and let's just go to this week uh, this week that was uh, that has been so far excuse me we'll go from uh, to up to yesterday and you can see small caps are still just really dominating the queues um, uh, during this, like, again, the last vestiges of this rally. In fact, it's kind of going a little parabolic, uh, the relationship, uh, the chart here between the queues and IWM is really dropped to a pretty sharply low level. It's kind of starting to figure out a base, but that there's your drop that we had on Monday. So we're kind of basing here. Um, at a really at a lower low than what we had even though our oscillators are forming obviously higher lows here So some divergences coming showing up on potentially a last leg higher and I told you before when this when this goes back up um, When it breaks but this is the 17 day exponential and the 30 day simple when it breaks back up and reverses the trend um, Then that's going to be a sign that's that's typically going to just like it did in June uh, that's going to start during a pullback, right? That this this is going to jump back up during a pullback um, in the S and P 500. Uh, when the, as I showed you before, the Russell with its very poor margin of safety uh, will drop more during the pullback. You would expect than the Qs. The question is when will that start? And it doesn't have to be tomorrow. It doesn't have to be today. It could be another couple of weeks for all we know. Uh, so that's why you still have to follow this trend until the trend breaks and then you know um, You'll have a good a much better um, sign that things are reversing uh, but uh, emerging markets doing well in fact when you look at the uh, the major economies out there uh, We'll do this 12 grid with the, the 12 biggest economies out there the ETFs that track those markets you can see dark green shading green lines across the board except for in the UK uh, and Brazil Everything else well above the moving averages. China well above its moving average. Uh, Double-digit returns in three months. Uh, India is up 23% in three months. So very, very good returns. Korea is up 30% in three months. China's up uh, 13%. Uh, everything else really close to double digits. So good returns all across the board. Very, very broad uh, rally, and you see that in the uh, sectors as well. Uh, with all the major sectors also dark green shading green line especially these cyclical areas but even like real estates like looking very similar uh, to these cyclical areas are all both all three up double digits the uh, energy is up 29 percent in the last three months financials up 15 percent so very small sector uh, weight the smaller weighted sectors in the s p 500 are kind of dominating uh, when you look at those uh, two, these are obviously the bigger, much bigger way. These three make up 50% right now, a little less than 50% of the S&P 500, uh, these three sectors. It was closer, sent, uh, but the, uh, this latest rally in the small cap index uh, in the Russell, the outperformance has brought these really small weighted sectors up a little bit, industrials as well. Health Staples not doing as well, healthcare kind of matching, so it's really still the cyclical areas that are dominating the most. In the last uh, couple of days, though, this for this week, when you look at um, here, when you look at um, sorry, here. Energy is up 5% this week uh, going into yesterday's close. I mean, it's just really kind of dominating, and the S&P is only up a half a percent. And you got some cyclical areas here, but you have one in particular um, is down uh, about a percent. And so everything else is kind of flat. So you got kind of two outliers, energy to the upside, and 
discretionary to the downside. And that's, you know, from an old market outlook trade that we're still in, uh, that I review in the market outlook lives, uh, we've been doing very well. And we actually rolled that call option uh, to a new um, expiration um, because of the good rally that I had this week. And we took advantage of that and locked in some credit uh, and bought some more time that, to allow that stock to continue to go. In fact, that stock got a bullish cluster on its weekly chart, which means that, it's, it, we, that this sector might still have weeks of really good rallies, especially if the dollar ends up being relatively bearish. Uh, that was one thing I didn't show you. I wanted to show you the dollar uh, here. Let's take a look at uh, the euro US dollar because we're going to try to see when, if and when this the trend, the, the bullish trend, uh, re engages. We're back on a bullish move, so the dollar is going back down. But we're light green shading and maybe a yellow line. We were a little bit this morning, um, but we're getting a lot closer. But we're still not, and we're back above the 38% retracement, but we're not back above the 23, which is where the, you know, you would expect a new intermediate run to start. Um, we obviously would have a yellow line. We probably have a dark green shading by then. So once you get back above this 121.75 area, then you're like, okay, we, we're back to being bearish on the dollar, bullish on the euro and bearish in the dollar and of course the energy sector benefits from that as we have seen pretty much since um, really since this low point and um, this low point here and there's a kind of a double bottom but from that low point on that's from this point on small cap stocks have really just dominated energy and materials and industrials especially which are all dollar sensitive sectors all right, so for our trade idea of the day, we took a look at Win uh, Resorts, and you can see we've got dark green shading, a green line. Uh, we had three green arrows, but not a spike in volume uh, on the three green arrows. Um, actually, we did get a little bit of a spike in volume, sorry. Uh, I was thinking about something else. We, but the histogram is already rolling over, as you can see, um, after that jump in volume. This is what the two lines look like. The histogram is rolling over. The 8 and the 17 day are above, whoops, are above their moving average. Uh, if you take a look at the um, the RSI and the CCI for win, uh, you can see uh, relatively bullish, but back in the 60 to 40 range, which is sideways. Relatively bullish too, but back in the 100 to negative 100 range, which is kind of a, a neutral range. You look at the DMI and you say, okay, are we getting a directional move here? And and we kind of are. The ADX is climbing above 20. Um, the positive index is kind of flirting with that 30 area, but nothing really too significant yet. Uh, from a trend strength standpoint, obviously we're on a bullish trend. We have been on the bullish trend, but we're still relatively noisy. So we haven't reestablished a new bullish trend yet after this strong move higher. We've been kind of sideways. Uh, so considering that's the, uh, the, the popular trade here lately, as when you're in mature bullish moves, is to look at bull put spreads, iron condors, uh, we did a bull put spread on win, but we also did a bear call spread. Uh, this 135, 140 uh, ended up getting, um, and I did this during the market outlook live yesterday, um, but we ended up getting, um, what, 582 divided by three? Um, is that 582 divided by three? Dollar uh, 94 in credit uh, on that trade. Uh, so we put a full position size on because we don't have to worry about the, the earnings and uh, for the stock going forward uh, when you can see the break even levels I got a break even right at the top of the value area to the downside in case we start to pull back and we don't have to worry about earnings now and then I have a lot of room to the upside to work with if we continue to go higher with no volume uh, holding us back if we continue to go to last February's highs up into that area the pre COVID highs then um, that's not my break even is actually outside this standard uh, the volatility range the one for the one standard deviation volatility range uh, so that's the trade that we've done um, again bull put spread with a bear call spread on the upside to to bring my bring my break even on, on the downside a little bit lower give me a little bit of extra credit uh, so i'm capping the top side for that but I think I have plenty of room until I get to that cap for the trade stock to work in. So that this is the, the strategy we've been employing a lot lately and, it's, lately, and it's been working out pretty well for us. So that does it for today. Um, so again, as always, you've heard from me. Uh, now I want to hear from you. So use the Market Outlook forums. Remember, all, all of our subscribers, including our free subscribers, get access to the Market Outlook forum. Uh, so use that link in the top right corner of your screen that's coming out there. 
and that will take you there and uh, open up any threads, reply to anybody else's threads, and let's keep this conversation going as always. Have a great rest of your Thursday. Make sure you check out Brandon's Market Outlook here later tonight, and we'll see you all next time.